so tart. Mm. Mm. I love it. Mm. Wow. The standard has been raised for mocktails. Mm. Yes. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode. I am so excited today because I got a new kitchen gadget and I figured that instead of just opening it up all by myself and testing it out, I figured that we could open it up and test it out together and see if it's really worth the money, see if the juice is worth the squeeze. And yeah, I'm so excited. So if this is your first time here, I'm a professional chef, a best-selling cookbook author of the cookbook Cook, Heal, Go Vegan. And I am obsessed with food and the food industry and everything that comes along with it. I'm also plant-based and vegan. And so if you have any questions about cooking food, plant-based veganism, like anything like that, you can drop them down below in the comments and be, be sure to subscribe for cooking videos and recipes and all that jazz. Okay, are you guys ready for the reveal of my brand new cooking appliance? I'm actually so excited. This is a gift from my mom, something that I've wanted to get myself for a long time, but I just never pulled the trigger on it. And my mom was like, you know what? We're doing it, so let's open it. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, guys. This is a food dehydrator. And what makes a dehydrator so amazing is that unlike cooking something at a high heat, you maintain a lot of the nutrients still in the food. That I was really into when we were doing a lot of raw vegan recipes and I was like buying a lot of dehydrated stuff. But now we no longer have to buy anything dehydrated because we can literally do it at home. Okay, so this one comes with and I will leave the link for this one below, but this one comes with some stainless steel grates, which are super important. It's kind of what everything gets dehydrated on. I like this one because it's pretty compact. Some food dehydrators are gigantic, and I feel like for small spaces, they just don't make sense. So this comes with six grates. I think I'm gonna need help from this guy over here. <laughs> Will you help me? Why, of course. Hello, you too tall for the camera. <laughs> As usual. Oh my God, this is chic. It's like, I've never seen a dehydrator this small No, it looks like a microwave. Chic. Yeah, it looks like a microwave. So this is what it looks like straight out of the box. And like, no one paid us to do this, just FYI. Her mom <laughs> bought this for us, actually. <laughs> she bought this for us like three months ago, and we're now opening we it. We are finally opening it. Well, that's pretty. That's Ours pretty. does not look like that. No. We got a small it baby. It could one. look like that, though. We don't need a dehydrator that big. No. Okay, anyway, these are some plastic things that came with the dehydrator. We don't like to put food in plastic too much though, so I'm probably gonna keep these for my makeup brushes. These are actually kind of perfect for that. Ooh, this is what we need. The sweet snack wraps. It's like carrot and mango. Oh yeah, like and mixed berry leather. leather. Ooh, yeah. We could make mushroom jerky. Yum. That's a good idea. Look, they came with little Little mini gloves. Little mini silicone gloves. We're gonna quickly give these a wash and then we decided that we're gonna dehydrate a bunch of blood oranges because we got a fresh bag from the farmer's market and we really wanna make some mocktails and margaritas, which means they need a garnish and a blood orange is the perfect thing. So we're just gonna quickly wash these. Let's do it. All right, we've got everything all set up. I have all my citrus. So today I'm going to use some farm fresh blood oranges. Blood, blood oranges just came back into season and they're kind of like the mix between a grapefruit and an orange. So they're a little bit tart, but they're also super sweet if you get them when they're ripe um, and they're bright red on the inside. So I think they're going to make amazing garnishes for cocktails. We also have Meyer lemons and I think that this is going to be such a nice addition to a cocktail as well because they're sweet 
And then we have some key limes that are on like honestly their last couple days. So I figured this is the perfect place to use them as well. I'm gonna give my lemons and citrus all a good little wash right now. And I just plugged this thing in in the back and I think I'm just gonna put it in the corner of my kitchen back there, right where the outlet is. So I can keep an eye on it and kind of check on it every few hours since this is our first time. So the key with slicing anything for a garnish is to slice it decently thin. You don't want it to be too thin though because you don't want it to kind of disintegrate within the food dehydrator. So I think we're just gonna cut off the ends and we can use the ends for something else. And then we just wanna do as consistent of slices as possible. I love making mocktails, but I think the thing that I always kind of lack is having a really good garnish. I think it can really kind of just change it and change the whole vibe of the drink. And having a dehydrated garnishes is so nice because they don't really go bad. You can kind of keep them for a while, probably a few months. And you want to keep them in an airtight jar away from sunlight and like a dark area. But if you do that, you'll be able to like keep these garnishes and just pop one in a drink whenever you want. Okay, look at the color of these blood oranges. They're so pretty. I've been obsessed with these for so long. Every single um, year, every single season that they happen, I literally am just a kid in a candy store and it's almost like it's my first time having them. I never get sick of it. I never get sick of produce or nature or just how like amazing all of this is. And the fact that all of this just grows naturally for us just always still just blows my mind. It really is just like having gratitude for the little things. The key limes are so cute. And I like the key limes a lot too because they're actually a little bit sweeter than regular limes and they have so much juice in them which i love obviously we have an amazing hibiscus mocktail actually it's a full-on cocktail now that i think about it in our free ebook and it's so good it's a hibiscus sour and we use um the can of chickpeas the aquafaba, the liquid from the can of chickpeas in the sour. And it's a perfect replacement for an egg white. And I think this would go perfectly with that. So if you want that recipe, you can just click this link below um, and download the free ebook to get that. Okay, so I have my little sheet and I'm gonna open this. Okay, I'm gonna open this and I've got my little there is a bottom tray to kind of just catch all of the, the juices as it's dehydrating. So I'm gonna put that right in the bottom. And then we're just gonna align. I did not cut these super evenly, but it's okay. I wanna keep them a little bit distant from each other so that the air can evenly go around all of them. So I'm gonna put the lemons on the top and the blood orange is on the bottom, just in case the blood orange juice drips. I don't want to get the blood orange juice on the lemons. I mean, okay, look at this one. That is insane. So beautiful. And that's our blood orange tray. And then we're going to do limes next. I feel like the limes were going to be able to fit a lot more because they're so little. So itty bitty. I feel like this is gonna be such a cool way to make so many different kinds of powders. I was thinking of doing like dehydrated strawberries to make a strawberry powder for the rim of cocktails, which I think is really fun too. So basically you would just grind them up in a coffee grinder. So this is like two uh, key lines. So I'm gonna cut one more. I'm also thinking about making mushroom jerky, making fruit leather, and also like red pepper wraps to put, make 
you know, wraps with like amazing gluten-free raw wraps that are really high in nutrient value. That is the move. Okay, so there's our key limes. So I'm just gonna put this in the middle. And I think I might do a couple more blood oranges just because I have so many of them. Perfect. This is the final tray that's going in. So I did five trays total. There's six trays that I could have done, but I feel like that's overkill a little bit. So I'm gonna pop it in. And I'll show you what it looks like once you throw it in. Just a typical classic dehydrator. This one is so chic though, and just really small, which I really like about it. The reason why I didn't get a dehydrator for so long is because they're all really big and kind of bulky and not super cute. And I feel like this one is just like stainless steel and chic. So I'm gonna plug this in, turn it on at 135 degrees. For about six hours, I'm gonna check it at six hours and then go from there. And then once they're dehydrated, obviously I'm gonna show you, and then we will also make a mocktail together to celebrate our brand new garnishes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm figuring this thing out. Um, it's basically, everything's dehydrating. It looks so cute, and you can see how uneven my slices are, so nobody judge me, okay? Um, but yeah, I'm so excited about this, and I'm a little embarrassed about how uneven they are, but it's all good. You can do Celsius or Fahrenheit, um, temperature, time. All right, I've got this at six hours, so hopefully that's enough time. If not, we'll, we'll crank it for higher. We'll see you in six hours tomorrow. For margaritas. <laughs> We've got blood oranges, baby. <laughs> Okay, this was kind of more of a process than I honestly thought it was going to be, only in the sense that it took a little bit longer than anticipated. So these blood oranges at 135 degrees in the dehydrator took about 14 to 15 hours. So it was way longer than I expected. And I kept having to like turn it on because the dehydrator would turn off after three or four hours. But needless to say, totally worth it. These things are so beautiful and they've been lasting forever. So we had initially recorded this video like three weeks ago and we ended up having to go on vacation. My mom came into town. I got super sick. Like so many things have happened since we initially dehydrated the blood oranges. And of course we have our Meyer lemons, which kind of came out a little bit more toasty, which I really, really like. And we've got our little key limes which are also super cute too. Um, but yeah, it's been a month and these guys are still looking so good. They smell so fresh. Like honestly, they just came out of the dehydrator. So this is definitely like such a great way to utilize your citrus. So you can create an epic cocktail or mocktail. Speaking of creating an epic cocktail or mocktail, we're gonna create one right now. I've been combating this like crazy chest cold, not to mention it's also al peak allergy season. So this is a recipe that we're gonna make to like boost our immune system and I love a good mocktail. So first step, we're gonna grab a cocktail shaker and I have two blood oranges because you know it's blood orange season. So we're gonna put it not just as a garnish but also in the drink too. And that's the thing about garnishes is you want them to really complement what's actually going on inside the drink. You don't want them to just be like random. Although sometimes I go to bars or like a cocktail lounge and they're super random, but that's okay. All right, once you have the juice of your two blood oranges, if you don't have blood oranges, obviously you could use a regular orange or a tangerine. We're gonna juice two limes. Limes are incredible for the immune system. I feel like lemons get all the hype, but limes have so much vitamin C and they're so good for healing. Plus they're also freaking tasty, so. All right, so we've got the juice of two limes. Then I'm gonna add about a quarter of a cucumber. I went ahead and pre-sliced it going to add this to the bottom and then a couple sprigs of mint we're going to garnish it with mint too but I just want to have that little like mint vibe inside of the cocktail 
This mocktail is actually like amazing for nausea too. So if you're nauseous or you're in a certain phase of your cycle where you're super nauseous, this is the one that's really gonna help kind of combat that and make you feel really good. And then finally, we're just gonna do, if you want this to be super low sugar, you can add no agave, but just to round out the flavor, I'm gonna add just like a little squirt of agave. Throw some ice on the top. And then I'm gonna shake this up really good, especially because I really wanna crush up all of that cucumber to kind of really release all the water from the cucumber. Whoo, it's cold. Oh my gosh, I need my mitts. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna set this to the side for a quick sec. <clears throat> and then grab your glasses. I'm gonna use these cute little tall Collins glasses that are made in Mexico. And then I have some blackberries, a few blackberries in the bottom, like five or six. There we go, and then I have my muddler right here, and I'm just gonna crush the blackberries on the bottom of the glass to really release all the juice. And this is gonna create a really beautiful layer on the bottom too. I am a fiend for a good cocktail, and even if I'm like sick or I just don't feel like drinking or I'm in a little like, mocktail mood i don't want to just drink soda water and lemon juice it's so boring so and i mean even if you did just drink soda water and lemon juice this garnish would honestly make it something special so i will i will give it that i'm just gonna add my ice on the top of my blackberries and then grab your shaker It smells so good and fresh. I've got my little strainer right here. I'm gonna pop it on the top and then we're just gonna pour into the glass. And to finish this off, especially for that like anti-nausea bubbly effect, we're gonna go for some ginger beer. I like ginger beer over ginger ale because it has less sugar, um, it's easy to find organic, and it's also more gingery. Usually ginger beer has fresh ginger in it, where ginger ale a lot of times just has ginger flavoring. So you're not gonna actually get the medicinal value of ginger from a ginger flavoring. So we're just gonna top it right on the top. Go kind of slow in case it wants to bubble over. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. And then we just wanna grab a couple of mint sprigs and we're gonna just stick it in the side like so. And then of course we need our blood orange garnish, which I'm just gonna stick right on the side as well. Every good mocktail needs a straw. Wait, my garnishes are coming apart. And boom, there you go. Look at this thing. This looks so good. Hey, Steve. <laughs> we gotta call him in here. <laughs> I'm coming. All right. Whoa. Here you go. Look at this thing. It's a blackberry ginger um, mule. Right? Blackberry blood orange ginger mule. Blackberry, well, I guess all mules are ginger. <laughs> Blackberry blood orange mule that obviously has ginger in it. She's cute. Cheers. Cheers. Love you. Mm. Wow.
Whoa. That's delicious. You get like the little hints of the cucumber, the mint. That is amazing. The blood orange. It's like perfectly tart, perfectly spicy from the ginger. And hopefully it's gonna help me get my voice back. <laughs> oh. mm. Look how cute that looks. I feel like this is what you would want to get at a bar when you order a mocktail. I know, this is the new standard. Okay, everyone, take notes. New standard. <laughs> All right, you guys, if you love this video, be sure to give us a comment below and subscribe, and don't forget to share it with a friend who wants a bomb mocktail or is really into dehydrating because this is super fun and I can't wait to see what we dehydrate next. We'll see you in the next one. Or comment below what you want us to dehydrate next or cook next. Yes. Okay, right. bye. Bye guys. See Cheers. Ya. Cheers. Ding. Ding. Mmm. 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 So good.